This is Al from Transformational Gaming. Appreciate you coming by. Appreciate you coming to the channel. Today, I would like to talk about God of War requiring nine studios to complete the project. Uh, before we get into all that, I'd like to commend and thank you guys for coming to the channel. I know it's hard wrapping back up once you've been kind of gone away from YouTube for a little bit, but I'd like to ask you guys to please continue supporting the videos and I think that YouTube and everybody will be better once this gets off the ground. So appreciate you getting me to this point, but we got a little bit more to go uh, as far as getting the required stats in order to get into uh, the places where we want to go. So anyway, let's get into it. A couple of weeks ago, I had came across an article that I wanted to talk about, and that was the fact that Santa Monica Studios, who's working on God of War, needed nine other studios, or eight other studios, requiring nine all studios together to finish the God of War project and this is written by Truth Trophies a guy named Lee Bradley and the article came out October 10th but I'm gonna read a little excerpt from it and then we can kind of paraphrase some of the points he has in this article but again the the articles from a website called truth trophies and the synopsis it says god of war ragnarok has gone go for the ps5 and the ps4 a month ahead of its release date thank combined efforts of the nine studios some of which have been working on playstation studio projects quietly for years it says god of war ragnarok has gone go a month before its release date on the PS4, PS5, meaning that the game has reached a playable, shippable state and that major development on the project has more or less been concluded. It's not the PlayStation Studio magic that makes games like 2018 God of War and this year's Last of Us Part 1 come out relatively bug free. In fact, God of War Ragnarok development required at least nine studios working together to help it across the finish line. And, and he come out with a couple of points that I thought was interesting. One of them was Santa Monica Studios, of course. They've been working and been tasked with creating God of War since the days of David Jaffe. But a couple of other studios that I thought was very surprising in lending its hand to the God of War series. And one of them was uh, That Games Company. Now, I've heard of that company before. Of course, they made Flower and Journey. But they also helped out with... Uh, PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. Now that was a very popular game back in the, I want to say 2013-14 era. They also helped out with Order 1886. That is pretty impressive. And they also helped with Pixel Junk Series. And I think that was a third party game. So the fact that Sony Studios would allow that to happen is a little bit puzzling, but that may have happened before Sony actually bought that game's company so be it as it may i thought that was very interesting the next one is really not surprising but the fact that they were so busy in the last couple of years i guess since the playstation came out especially uh, with finishing up this uh, major game that i'm about to mention and that studio is blue point games now blue point games i think is kind of a util type of studio that sony has kind of kept and helps everybody else because you notice like they really haven't really released anything else and so the fact that blue points only really have one game out for sony and don't really have anything else in the pipeline shows that they're probably being used as a, like a utility studio and uh, that's mighty interesting because i think the studio has a lot of talent and you can catch a interview with them on digital foundry you know some of the developers for that studio it's quite interesting uh, people not to say the least but people may know blue point from shadow of colossus remakes and soul franchise and you know like i said when sony had bought them i really thought that they was going to be doing a lot of remakes and they kind of have but you know a lot of games that has been remade has been remade by that actual studio so i don't know maybe that's kind of what sony's using them for even though like naughty doll remade the last of us blue 
point was probably, excuse me for the point, but the point man for building uh, The Last of Us uh, because I'm pretty sure Naughty Dog is working on bigger, better things, especially something like The Last of Us 3, right? <laughs> so they may be working in that capacity. Jetpack Interactive. Now, I don't know this studio, but they've done God of War ports before from what I understand. And they're very talented studios super alloy interactive are motion capture studio so they probably have been in charge of the motion capture so says the article and they've helped with a lot of other different games like callisto protocol i don't think they're exclusive to sony even though it says they are i'm pretty sure sony's getting a piece of, of whatever if they're helping out on callisto protocol so we move on they've also received help from a company called original force and red hot i I've never really heard of them but they're kind of one of those studios behind a lot of other games being built but lastly we have super ingenious studio which i don't think is exclusive to sony because if they are sony must have recently bought them because you don't really hear too much about that studio but um been recognized for overwatch and they have a studio playstation does called playstation studios creative arts they seem to be kind of a util team for the playstation studio as a contractor so but that's about all of the studios if i miss some i'll attach the link to this article in the description in the video section but you know i just think it's really interesting that sony really encapsulates why they are excellent in this article because really if you think about it that's what most studios do that are really really good they may be working on something and somebody is able to call another studio up within the first party and say hey look i need help with this and this is what functional studios do they don't have silos they have the ability to say hey look i need help on this project could you send this guy over here? and so i think that's awesome like i said any project that's been released be it you know music albums or video games or you know any project that you can think of building contract work they always have within the company a kind of a uniformity about them to where reaching out to another studio or another department or another IT department or whatever right reaching out to those ancillary parts is easy and uh, receptive and doesn't require like you know, an intervention of the boss coming in and saying, hey, look, you got to do something for this studio. I mean, you know, I worked in a lot of dysfunctional companies and I can tell you that reaching out and trying to get help and trying to resolve stuff with people across teams is very difficult. It's very difficult because they let you know, hey, look, I ain't trying to make this for you. And you have to explain to them, no, I'm trying to get this information. <laughs> So it's very difficult, but that's how successful studios work. And I think companies like Microsoft can learn something from this because I can tell you right now without even ever really working at Microsoft that there are silos there at Microsoft and there's big time silos at Microsoft and everybody is CYA cover your butt type of mode and nobody is trying to help anybody everybody's trying to cover their own you know what and you can tell and that's why no games get released you know but that's a breakdown in management and i'm not the only person who said that before you know microsoft has poor management and it's always going to be difficult for them to release anything because they don't have a uniformity in their company culture to say hey look this team is three-fourths over the finish line they at a hump and we all need to step in and help and so uh, i'm just glad that there's at least one company out there i'm pretty sure nintendo does uh something similar and all the successful companies uh, that are out there they have the same mindset even the guys at amd i think amd is somewhat successful and you know nvidia those type of companies are successful and they release successful products because they have a a uniformity culture within the office walls so just wanted to bring that out and express how important that is because it is important that to get a game or a project over the hump sometime 
you need external help and Sony shouldn't be going out and I'm pretty sure they have at some point but they shouldn't be going out and hiring contractors all over the place just to get an engine working or something like that I just think that's balloons up a project uh, cost and you know if you can get some homegrown help with some talented studios that complement each other I think that goes a long way anyway that's all I wanted to talk about uh, something told me to say hey look you should make this video and it was on my heart so I said let's do it anyway if you like the content feel free to come back promote the channel tell a friend to tell a friend and until then may the truth make you free later